Hello guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how I created this medieval battle scene from scratch in Blender. I started by collecting some reference images of how I wanted the men at arms to look like. And once I had a good idea of the style I was going for, I opened up a fresh Blender scene. I deleted the default cube and added in a fresh one, and then shaped that to a stick figure shape. And uh, this will be our base mesh. I gave it some extra geometry for the fingers, and uh, then subdivided everything and went on to sculpting. It didn't have to be super super detailed since everything would be covered in layers of armor. So after some sculpting I had this result for my base mesh and uh, now it was time to create some armor for this guy. I used uh, this image as a reference but I didn't force myself to replicate it one to one and uh, I used the same multi-resolution workflow as in my monster VFX video so once the shapes were in place I could sculpt on the detail by hand and then bake that to a normal map to give it a low poly but detailed result. Once the chest armor was done I moved on to creating the first helmet variation and this style is called a salad I believe so I created the basic shapes subdivided it sculpted in some detail and then baked that to a normal map to get this result then I started working on creating the plates for the arms legs and hands this was by far the most time-consuming part of the modeling since uh, there was all of these pretty small interlocking plates that had to be created individually and also fit together nicely so that took some time but I pushed through and after a couple of hours of modeling this was the final set of plate armor. Before moving on to the cloth and chainmail details I created a second helmet variation basing it loosely on a basquinet style helmet and uh, I wasn't really trying to do anything historically correct but drawing some inspiration from real armor sets and helmets really helped make the designs feel a little bit more grounded and I also went down this rabbit hole of looking at different medieval helmets that stuff is crazy what they came up with. I like the um, the face ones, it's like a, just a metal face on top of your face. It would be scary. Anyways, no armor would be complete without the underlying uh, layers of protection, so I moved on to create this gambeson that sits underneath the plates. So I duplicated the base mesh and I uh, used a cloth simulation to get this gambus on piece and then repeated that method to get some pants. And uh, at this point it was looking really good but I had some overlapping issues that needed to be fixed so I uh, went in and sculpted everything to fit together nicely. I made some uh, gloves and then used ChatGPT to generate an image of a medieval looking face to project onto the base mesh so it wouldn't just be empty underneath the helmet. And to any 3D purists out there you can rest easy knowing this was the only AI I used for this project except for the programming of the battle script later on yeah I can't program so to quickly add some detail I made this strap and buckle piece and then used a surface deform and shrink wrap modifier to help me fit that snugly in different areas of the armor and the only thing left for the armor at this point was a chainmail and I, I've tried a couple of different methods to do this before but I think the most convincing way is to do it for real using geometry. So I made this sheet of chainmail using some array modifiers and then cut out parts of that and then used a separate cloth sim object to get it to drape the way I needed it to. Once all of this was done our men at arms were finished and I moved on to rigging them in Mixamo. Now to get these nice chaotic interactions where the characters can physically interact with each other simulation is the way to go. So the idea was to record some mocap using my Rococo suit and then have a simulation setup that makes the characters try to follow that animation but still collide with obstacles very similar to how an active ragdoll works in video games but before we do that a quick word from this video sponsor Skillshare Skillshare is the world's largest online learning community for creators with countless of professional quality classes on a wide range of topics including blender and uh, this segment is to let you know that Skillshare is now offering a full month for free to the first 500 people that click the link in the description and also on top of that, if you decide to stick around, you actually get a 20% discount on an entire year after that. So if you want to take that opportunity and maybe do some Blender classes, I believe you could really learn a lot in that one month. So yeah, click that link in the description for a free month and let's continue with simulating our battle scene. So I recorded a bunch of different animations and then created this ragdoll setup using rigid bodies connected with constraints. Then I duplicated this setup and connected those objects to the corresponding 
corresponding parts using a dampened rotation constraint. So when the animation drives these animated rigid bodies, the simulated ones try to follow that rotation. Then I parented this whole setup to an empty and used ChatGPT to write a runtime script that takes care of the turning and blending between running and attacking animations. And uh, this took a lot of time to adjust everything and make it run smoothly, but uh, in the end we got this simulation right here. And obviously there are some issues here and a couple of really funny interactions, like um, this guy carrying his body uh, <laughs> away from the battle. Yeah, you can always expect some funny moments when uh, trying to simulate something like this. But I wasn't too worried about that since I uh, knew I could just hide those weird bits with the camera moves later on. Once the animation was locked in, I moved on to creating this basic environment for the battle. I added in a ground plane, some mountains in the background, and then simulated these clouds to have some realistic cloud coverage that blends into the mountains. At this point, the scene was getting really heavy to the point where I had to restart my whole computer between each test render. So I realized I had to do a little bit of optimization with these background soldiers to have it run relatively smooth. So I remeshed the characters and then baked all of the materials to a single PBR material. And uh, this is actually kind of crazy how well it turned out. From a little bit of distance, you can't even tell which one is the remesh. To my surprise, even the chain mail got through really nicely. To uh, make the ground interaction feel a little bit more grounded, I simulated this layer of shallow water to ripple as they run across it. And uh, this gave us a sort of flooded field look that I really liked. Finally, to add a little bit of color to the battle and also help distinguish between the two sides, I gave some of the soldiers this uh, cloth garment with a different shield on each side. And for the shields, I actually used two different uh, Swedish county shields, so uh, bonus points in the comments if you know where these two are from. And after rendering for many hours over a couple of days and doing some basic sound design and color grading, this was the final battle scene. Thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you were able to learn something or maybe grab a little bit of inspiration for one of your projects. And I also want to give a shout out to the patrons of this channel, you guys are awesome and uh, the support is uh, greatly appreciated. And yeah, there's more good stuff coming there soon, so stay tuned for that. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.